I've modded this RC car to use a huge fan to suck it to the ground. I wanted to know if this would make it faster than the original, so I've been putting these two cars head to head in a series of challenges including slaloms, laps around an indoor course, and full throttle speed runs around an asphalt track going faster and faster until, of course, something spectacular happened. <laughs> <laughs> this video was sponsored by NordVPN. I'm no stranger to weird aero devices on cars, as last year I built one with huge wings to see if I could get some better cornering performance from a high-speed RC car. Because so many of you watched that video, I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to build a much more powerful aero device that creates much more downforce. Downforce is used to get more grip from the tyres of a car, usually with large upside-down aeroplane wings that push the car down. Ground effect cars create a similar effect, but in this case they use specially shaped floors that accelerate air through venturi tunnels that lowers the air pressure. This effectively allows cars to create a vacuum of sorts that pulls them down to the track, giving them more grip. Formula One in the 1980s took this to the extreme with this beast of a car called the Brabham BT46, which was basically just a huge vacuum cleaner. So yeah, that was the inspiration for this project, but it wasn't going to be easy as you're about to see. So to start, I got hold of two cars with the idea to modify one and keep the other stock. This meant I could compare the two in challenges later. I made sure to get the car with lots of room for a floor between the wheels and this was half 3D printed and half made of aluminium. I designed the vacuum floor to use two 50mm EDFs that I had from my first rocket plane project. I bolted everything together firmly and hot glued any gaps to make sure there were no possible areas that could leak air. Okay I've now just finished putting the electronics onto the top of this thing and it's now pretty heavy. I've been driving it around to see if I can get any noticeable ground effect or any suction from the thing pu pulling the uh, the suspension down but uh, because of the the fact that we've not got a skirt on this thing it basically means that you, you see no effect whatsoever so the next step is to create a high pressure boundary so you've got the high pressure on the outside low pressure on the the inside um, by making a skirt but what is a skirt well essentially it's a physical boundary that separates the low and high pressure air skirts on ground effect cars from the 1970s and 80s were flexible meaning they could move and create a constant seal with the track I thought that I might need to do something similar but it turned out that the fan actually pulled the flexible electrical tape up and completely ruined the seal to the ground. I tried some more heavy duty duct tape skirts as these I thought would work better because duct tape fixes everything remember and they did to an extent. With the fans on about 30% power the, the car firmly gripped down to the carpet but it also sucked up all of the dust from the corners of the room and threw it all over my workshop which was uh, pretty disgusting. Yeah. How much suction was it making though? Well not enough to keep it upside down which is what I sort of hoped that it would be able to do. So how would I go about getting some more performance? Well, of course, I needed to go bigger. As it stands, the ground effect area on this car is only, you know, so big, and I've realized I could actually make it way, way larger. So what I'm going to do is channel my inner Gordon Murray and make the bed as big as it can possibly be so that we can get the best downforce effect from this car. So at the moment, we've got this sort of area under the car. It only goes sort of within these wheels here. What I want to do now is extend the bed far further forward and rearward between the wheels. So I designed a much larger floor for the car with more than twice the volume of the previous design while extending the solid sides down to create rigid skirts. Also I made the car lighter and require less power by using a larger and more efficient fan on the back. After a lot of tea and a lot of work the car was almost ready save for one crucial safety feature. A little annoyingly while testing the previous version I shed a blade due to sucking something up through one of the ducts. That almost took my head off. I needed to stop this happening again so I sought a culinary solution. Right. This is what we're going to fix this problem with. I've got an idea. We're going to use a sieve. So yeah, a nice and simple way of solving this issue was just cutting the sieve up and yeah, installing it as a mesh under the car. I then proceeded to get overly excited about how the new and improved car felt with a series of experiments including, again, seeing if the car could hold itself upside down, which it now could. This meant it had over a kilogram of downforce. So with the car finished and raring to go, it was time to pack up the two cars into my big car, or slightly bigger car, and find a location to put them head to head with some speed challenges. Before we get to the test site, however, it's time for a quick ad from the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. NordVPN has more than 5,200 servers in 60 countries, which is quite a lot. You can find a server near you for better speed or in a faraway location for more content. If I was in the US and I wanted to access UK uh, shows 
shows and streaming services um, like I was home, then uh, yeah, I could use NordVPN to make sure that I could do that. NordVPN is also the fastest VPN out there, which is confirmed by speed tests. It's on every major platform, Windows, Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Linux. So yeah, go to nordvpn.com slash projectair and use my promo code projectair to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. It's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Right, thanks very much NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now it's time to get to the uh, test site for some challenges. The ideal place for testing this project was at the BMFA headquarters, as they'd allowed me to use this smooth hanger and this circular track for the day, and yeah, both had really good surfaces to test a high tolerance ground effect car on. Here's Mike. Hello. And we're setting out a course. What do you think the chances are of hitting that plane? Very yeah. likely. <laughs> First test is to see how fast we can go around a few of these cones and see what sort of uh, performance we get out of the fan car versus the standard car. The floor felt really slippery while skidding around like this, and I found it quite difficult to control the stock car with zero downforce. It would wildly understeer or kick out the rear if I gave it too much throttle. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right, let's hope we see some uh, better performance with the fan car. At first it seemed the car was much, much grippier, but slowly the same understeering characteristic as the stock car seemed to appear, which was a bit weird. Whoops. Wrong way around. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. <laughs> oh, that could have, uh, that could have affected things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. Why is that all coming? That's, that's all off the floor. Well, that's not going to help. Yeah, the floor was surprisingly dirty, and the fan car was simply sucking everything up onto that sieve, which completely blocked it and ruined the performance of the fan. So, obviously, the next step was to get the brooms out and sweep the whole area the best we could. Despite this, it still seemed to be throwing a ton of dust up into the air. See how much See it's how yeah. It's picked up so much. That's disgusting. That was less than like 30 seconds. Yeah. Ago. Well, that could be a bit of a flaw with this car design. It's going to hoover up everything. I mean, the good thing is we could take off the uh, sieve on the bottom. Yeah. I've, I've actually accidentally invented a hoover. Yeah, by I think this is what James Dyson did. I imagine he was into these kind of cars. So. <laughs> I didn't bother with that for now, just to make sure I protected the fan. Instead, we cleaned the floor a bit more and then did a series of slalom challenges to see which car was fastest around some cones laid out in the line. The stock car was certainly a lot harder to control. Interestingly, the fan car was only slightly faster, but we soon realised why this was when looking at the footage. Essentially, the fan car was being limited by drag from the skirts hitting the floor. Running the fan at a lower power setting seemed to help with this, as it kept the skirts just off the floor, with the tiniest of gaps for optimal efficiency. So this is when I think that the fan was actually on too high. So uh, with, with our subsequent driving, it seems that there's a sweet spot between, you know, um, having it sucked down enough to get grip and uh, not actually, you know, reduce our overall speed with friction with the ground. Mm. This setup change certainly helped when it came to going around a larger course, as you're about to witness. For comparison, the stock car was so much slower, I basically had to keep the throttle really low, just to make sure I didn't spin out all the time. In contrast, the fan car could absolutely floor it and power around the circuit with confidence, as the downforce meant I could keep the throttle on for far longer. Of course, this didn't stop me from crashing into Mike again. Oh no! Well, that was bound to happen sooner or later. Thankfully, the car wasn't that damaged, which meant we could head outside for one final challenge. Time to test this on the, uh, the big circle track for control line planes. Would the heavier fan car still be faster here? Would its skirt on the more abrasive surface create too much drag? And would I be able to avoid completely destroying it? Or destroying something else? Well, it seemed pretty fast, setting some good lap times as a benchmark. Judging by the onboard, it wouldn't understeer at all. Even when driving through a puddle, it only seemed to slide a little before regaining traction and powering away. Then I took the apex just a little too far.
Now, quick tip, just in case you decide to do some similar RC car experiments, don't put your camera on the ground to get some cool low angle shots. You're about to see why. Right, would the lighter car regain some credibility and set a faster time? Well, to finish first, first you have to finish. And it turns out that having a ton of understeer really doesn't help you when you want to go in a circle. when it's furthest away. Let's try that again. It couldn't get much worse than that, could it? <laughs> what did you just hit? I think I hit the cameras and everything else. Oh no. <gasps> oh no. Not again. Oh, it's oh, everywhere. My camera, my poor camera. Just hit absolutely everything. This is the camera I started the YouTube channel with. I mean, this this doesn't look too bad. Oh, although the door's broken. Is this oh door? no, the actual casing snapped. Gonna need a few more Patreon supporters for this. Yeah, well, thank you Patreon supporters for supporting my channel <laughs> on that note. So we didn't even get the time to compare the fan car to, but maybe in the end that does show that it was the more successful car. I'd say this thing was seriously impressive overall, especially seeing as though a fan means that downforce is constant at any speed. Maybe I should build a bigger one. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to watch this one next because it's the one where I stuck huge wings on a 90 miles an hour RC car. And yeah, like with most of my videos, not all went smoothly and there are a few calamities along the way. So yeah, check that one out and thanks for watching this video. See you on the next one.